everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your archer, but I'm totally going to show you how to paint. And I mean that. I'm really going to show you how to paint. Yes, you, how to paint. This is a really gorgeous painting all about self-love and self-care. I've done a lot of Valentine's Day paintings. Um, they're for a lot of different kinds of love. But this painting is about self-love and self-compassion, especially radical self-compassion. So you've got a little mission while you're learning how to paint this key to your heart in acrylic. And that is to, during the painting, if you feel frustrated or you feel overwhelmed, to stop and really be kind to yourself and remind yourself that, hey, I'm trying something new. And not every part of this has to be easy, but I do need to keep it fun. So do what you can do to keep your art part fun. And all you've got to do is follow along with me in the steps. You don't even have to draw. I do provide a traceable but I promise you, I break down how you can draw this. I'm going to introduce you to an artist knife. And if you're a little nervous about uh, palette knives and artist knives, I have a video for beginners introducing you. And there's even an old community post and I'll repost it um, for this one on how to do that right and left handed. So no matter where you are in your art journey, you're very familiar with artist knives. You're very unfamiliar with artist knives. I can help you do this painting and you really can. So let's pick up all of our materials and get ready. Come back and meet me. These I'm going to show you how you can create this painting right here. So we have an eight by eight surface here. This has the word self love on it. And this is to remind you that this painting is about being compassionate to yourself. And this Valentine's Day, we're going to like, be loving to ourselves and take care of ourselves. And so that's what this is, putting that energy into the world. I have the colors Cad Red, Yellow Ochre, Mars Black, Titanium White. I have a couple artist knives. These are the RGM ones. I love these. They have nice cranks. They have the fun rubber handles. They're colorful and they come in a lot of sizes. You could do just one knife or you could have a big and a small. It's really up to you. It's just fun to have a variety. And I've got a little tube of paint here so that I can put this out. And I've got my little titanium white ready to go. I'll put these a little bit to the side. And let's start with step one. Step one is going to be fun. I'm going to take an angle brush, a nice big one. This is a three quarter inch angle. I'm going to get it slightly wet. I'm going to grab my black paint. And I am going to paint the whole surface with the black. Actually, I might even be fun and just put out some black paint and paint the surface because I love myself and I want this to be easy for me and I want this to be easy for you. I kind of just run the tube sort of flush with the canvas and it just puts out a little bit of paint and then I can, I can move it around, moving it around all over the canvas, you know, cover, coloring everything black there. So it's sort of fun to start with a black canvas. You can find these sometimes out in the wild in the art stores, um, pre-painted black and on sale. And I highly recommend you grab one if you do, because the gesso on them can be often very higher quality than you'd expect. Um, Cause the color gessos, they don't always bother making a color gesso unless they use good ingredients. Um, so, Sometimes that's an indicator of quality in the canvas. Now you can paint the sides around the edges or you can just kind of go around the bend of the canvas. You have to at least go around the bend of the canvas so that when you frame, it looks nice in the frame. And I'm, I am kind of smoothing it out, even though we're going to have lots and lots of layers, just to give me a nice substructure to work from. I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to uh, put this to the side. Now, for the next step, I'm really going to want to have it be dry. Uh, whenever I do drying on my show, I just want to remind you that um, you pause me and you dry your canvas and then you start me again when your canvas is dry. And that way we're painting together all the time. That's a fun way that we can be together. Okay. So now I'm going to get out my artist knife. I'm going to use the smaller of my diamond heads because I think that'll be enough for this one. But I've got the bigger one set aside. I'm going to pull out a little bit of red paint and I'm going to mix in black paint. Now I have a whole video on how to do palette knives for beginners if you've never used these and I'll make sure I put that in the description down below. But what we're basically doing is mixing our darkest red 
and then I'm going to do what's called loading a bead. So first I offload where I get the paint off the knife and then I scrape from the right to the left loading a bead on the right hand side. And this time I'm going to very carefully scrape down with my paint. So it's a very scraping motion. It's going to give me this rough background. I'll have to mix it a few times. You can come back. We're making a rough, rustic texture. Rough and rustic texture. This is a great painting to do with the abstract uh, acrylic set I demoed uh, recently because the uh, red is and the black is so inexpensive that it makes doing the palette knife painting a little more fun. Because you're not worried about the expense. You know, the thing about caring about yourself isn't about being vain or um, putting yourself first at the expense of other people. But it's about doing little things in the day while you're doing for others, like remembering to take some time to paint or take a walk or listen to a song. That you just give just a little of your day back to yourself. That's really what we're talking about. So that when you get to the end of the day, you're not so depleted. It's one of the things about being a giving person is that you can give too much um, of yourself and then end up in real trouble in your well-being. I'm going to pull out a little more red here and just go a little bit at a time. Mix up my dark color. We're just going to build up these layers. Notice that I'm really scraping it very close to the canvas. These are thin, thin layers. That's a way I'm mitigating the expense. Loading up here, just making sure all of it is loaded on my brush. You can see there's the black. I just come in there and mix it up. I've seen people do a technique akin to this with credit cards and or, or like gift cards probably gift cards is better than credit cards so these days the way credit is i don't know it might serve us better as an art material i'm just going to fill this whole canvas with this now i'm pretty careful to make it not too thick and the reason I watch the thickness of it is that um, if you paint it overly thick, it'll make putting the key in later harder than it needs to be. And we're just making sure that this background has some dark, deep reds to build this full structure out. So we've got the black and then the dark reds. And then we just build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. Like building up your self-esteem every layer is like building up your self-esteem and when you get enough depth and dimensionality in your layers you have great character and you're a lot of fun to be around right yes yes you are a lot of fun to be around for those of you who went no i'm not yeah you are yeah you are We got to watch that internal self talk. That's a hard one because you can do a surface positivity talk, but your internal deep core self talk, it can be really rough. And you want to make sure that, you know, when you're thinking about yourself, you're thinking about yourself in kindness. Like, how would you present if you were a child and also yourself, how would you talk to you? You went back to your in the past and talked to your younger self. How would you talk to you? Would you be putting yourself down or would you want to really build that little kid up? You know, that's what we're doing inside when we uh, practice nice, kind self-talk. We are taking care of our inner child. We're going back in time and being there for that little one. Maybe when nobody was there for them. We can go back in time in our minds and be there for that child and be kind. 
I like to leave pops of black really still showing through. I like I think it builds up the layers very nicely. Now I mean, wipe this off between techniques and I may store it in my water bucket here for like a second. I'm going to want to dry everything. Now give yourself extra time to dry because you put the paint down as if you brushed it quite thickly even though you've been scraping it thinly with a knife. It's like you brushed it quite thickly. So let's dry this thoroughly. Remember, uh, you start me when your painting's dry. I'll wait for you, I promise. And uh, we'll come back and do the next layer. So now that this is completely dry, I put out a little more red and I'm gonna grab my black and pull out a bead. And I'm gonna mix a red that is brighter than the first red, but only a little bit because I wanna build up the layer. Right. I want to build up the texture and the color. I mixed a little more this time now that I've covered the whole canvas. I have kind of a better idea of how much red it takes of the whatever value I've got. And hopefully what we have here is, yes, a nice lighter shade. Notice that I've got lots of black going through. And I can be even looser this time. I can come into the center though. Uh, you want to make it really nice and bright behind the key. So there's lots of contrast. So we're going to get this all the way up to a pure red at some point. Put that all in. Make sure that's all mixed in. It's going to take all of that to do the work we're going to do. I like to come different directions. Just really play with the art knife. Make it fun. This is an art you have to take seriously, but I'm going to tell you right now that this technique you're learning works for bark, for trees, for rocks. So yeah, we're painting a happy little self-love key. The key to happiness being self-love and all of that. But you're also learning a technique that you can use in a myriad of ways in landscape painting, portrait painting. You can do so much with an artist knife. But the problem is, is that sometimes, I guess because they're called artist knives, and I know a lot of you guys are like, I can't call myself an artist. I've only painted a hundred paintings, and that's not being an artist yet. I mean, they're everywhere in my house, and everyone at every art store knows me, but I'm not an artist yet. I hate to break it to you. You were an artist your first painting. If you draw, create music, write poetry, just do anything creative as a human being, you are an artist. And it's important to know that and love yourself where you're at right now. So I like that. That's a very nice texture. You can see the trick is just leaving little spots that are open. Okay, we're going to dry this thoroughly again and come back and mix the next lighter color. So now we're going to continue to brighten the sort of vignette where our focal object's going to be, the key to our hearts, right? So another red, I'm going to bring all the red that I have mixed from before over and I'll take a little bead, not too much, of black and come and mix a much brighter red, but not a completely pure red. And that's because I want to reserve the last bit for, uh, you know, that pop of bright, bright red, and then maybe even a slightly lightened red. So I'm going to come in and load a bead, and I'm going to go from right to left, and sometimes move up. And what I mean is like I'm bringing the palette knife up, and that can help spread out the paint in an interesting way. That's what we're trying to do, spread out the paint in an interesting way. I can come up and just smearing. If you've uh, if you've done a peanut butter sandwich in your life, you are familiar with this technique, the smearing technique. Uh, first uh, brought to popularity uh, the turn of the century. Smearing is as old as time. Part of the natural human expression. 
I like to leave a little bit of what's underneath showing, but you can see it's now getting brighter in the center, right? And we are still have room for something super bright, but and it's the ability to um, compare and contrast that's going to really help the key kind of show and be dramatic on this background. This is also something if you like how this comes out, if you're able to execute this well. Um, you can then go do it big and they make knives that are really large so you can do a big canvas. You know, but you know, if it's not your favorite painting, guess what? That's okay too. Because self-love is self-acceptance. You are where you're at and that is okay. Doesn't got to be any deeper than that. You don't have to prove that you have a right to be here by being perfect or, I don't know like perfectly good right you just just be here because you're you and this is your time on this magical little ball we call earth time for you to make the most of it now i'm going to dry that again so i can come back with some bright bright red i'll see you when we get back with dry canvases for the next step, I'm going to want to find the center line of my uh, canvas here. And so we know that these are 8 by 8 so I'll come and find 4 right, right here, and then I'm going to come overhead. And you'll often find that I am within a centimeter or two of where true center is, which is why a lot of times I feel confident eyeballing things in. Um, I can't do the maths, but apparently I can eyeball spatially, okay? So I'll take that, especially right now, right? And you know what? I can do the maths. It's just not my favorite. And that's okay, too. But of course I can do math. We have to learn to be careful about how we talk about ourselves. I'm going to bring a line straight down, and I'm going to want to stop it at least here. Give yourself about a half inch from the base. So that gives me a nice straight line to build my key from, your key square back. Um, you can use anything that's square to set that line or you can eyeball it. That's okay too. Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to do the heart. I might take off my bracelet so I don't have anything interfering with me doing the heart. Once I've got that side, I just match it. As close as I can. All right. Now we're going to paint this just a little bit thicker. This isn't our final painting of this, but we're just getting a sense of scale and construction on what we're going to be painting on this heart. So I'm trying to do it about, oh gosh, a quarter of an inch in width. That's not too bad. Going to add a ball right here. Drawing a circle with my brush. And then let's make a little ring. I've got a traceable if you don't want to freehand this in. And there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to freehand it in. But I'm going to thin my black a little bit. I take a drop of water and I kind of swirl it in there and I thin it. And then I roll my brush. I will just thicken this till I'm happy. I mean, the key to our hearts, right? That's any key that you feel like painting. It's your heart. It's your key. So, your key can't be wrong. You painted it. And it doesn't need to be exactly like my key because we're different people. But if you want it to be exactly like my key, I have traceable. Now I'm going to come and add the little little parts of the teeth coming out. I come here and here. And I try to keep them about the same width. And then I go there. Now I will paint 
teeth that are hopefully approximately the same size. But remember, this is a painting. You're not doing a rendering for a new product. So you don't have to be like perfectly accurate measurements. And then I'm going to come right here and build in that key. There we go. We're building in that key. Now we have a lot of like design and everything that we're going to be doing there. I'm also going to add a bead. It's not like a bead like on a necklace, but it's like a bead of metal that we're going to be able to highlight. And that's going to be really fun because it's going to make our key seem very, very rustic. Okay, now that I have this in, I'm much closer to being able to know where I can put the last of my um, bright, bright, bright red. So let's dry everything so we don't make a big mess smearing our key to the right or to the left. Oh, wow, I made a rhyme. That was fine because I'm right on time. I will stop now. But you get my drift. I'm resisting right now doing it again. So I'm going to dry this and stop rhyming. And when we come back, we're going to continue painting. So I'm going to use my knife again, my diamond, and I'm going to also include, this is a number zero de brush, but what I'm looking for is the scratchy end of this. This is a hog bristle or rough brush. You don't have to have this exact brush. You just want a rough scratchy brush so you can do the dry brushing and the other techniques. But first, I'm going to grab a little bit of my pure CAD and I'm going to get a nice bead going. And let's come here and very carefully skip over letting the paint kind of come off our knife in an irregular unpatterned way. Now I'm being a little bit precious. You'll notice I'm being thoughtful right now about how this looks and, and where it goes. Remember, I can come back and paint over this completely. So I'm careful, but I don't have to be afraid. And these little bright pops of red are just really wonderfully colorful. I'm going to put some here if I can. Wiped off the extra so that I can put some technique in there. Now I'm going to be painting a little bit over the black lines I put in. But what I've done is I've made it where I could see, see what I've got. At this point, I've made the canvas rough enough where I can skip over with the knife a little bit. These are actually fairly precision tools when you see them in the hands of a master, you know. One of the things that you'll notice is that it's almost effortless and they can they can paint high detail, they can paint impressionistically, they can do anything with this tool that a brush can do. And yet it'll be this wonderful rough texture. But you know what? We don't have to have the hands of a master to enjoy an artist knife. That wasn't a condition that the tool set forth. It doesn't have written on it must be master artist to use. It's it's for everyone because it's fun. And we're allowed to have fun with things. I have done 24 karat gold leaf. You know, that's this pretty serious art material. I'm certainly not a master of illumination. I'm good. But I'm not a master. I'll put a little bit of this yellow in there. I mean this red in there. Just making sure that there's these bright, bright contrasting pops of red. It's really going to give this piece, you know, it's just vibrancy. I have so many paintings about romance. I've got the proposal paintings. I've got paintings for couples that have been together for a while and are celebrating. I've got all kinds of every kind of love painting because love is love and I support it all. 
And so there's a painting for everything, but I realized, um, and I even have a heartbreak painting where like, it's a murderous little painting, like fully in the Alanis Morissette, you ought to know kind of vibe space. But this, this is my first, I think, self-love painting where we, we talk about how we are kind to ourselves and how we can make a little time to include ourselves in the day to day. Because it's easy to make time for your kids and for your friends, right? You love them, but you may not love yourself enough to make time. And if that is true, you got to work on that because you'll be ever so much more fun. For everybody around you. You have just a little bit of self-love going on. You can say to skip through. All right. So it's a little artful here. But, you know, sometimes you want that to be true. You want that space to be really creative. I'm going to put this in the water. Wipe this off. We're going to once again do the deal where we dry everything. And then come back and paint some more. So I'll see you in a second. I've got my D brush here and my round brush. This is the six sepia in my hand. I'm going to come through and this time I might put on my glasses, right? Because that which I can see, I can paint significantly better. <laughs> That's my, like you do. <laughs> you put your glasses on like you do. And you hope that you clean them in recent memory before you decided to record this little wonderful video but it's okay if you didn't because self-compassion radical self-compassion says it's been a busy week and I am actually grateful to just be back painting now I'm going to kind of shape this work now this metal work I want to make sure that this is thick enough to feel real and metallic when we get to it, when we do the metaling texture, the metaling. This is the metaling. Kubrick's new film. I don't know. I'm not sure if this is uh, enough of one of his little Kubrick spaces to be there, but I feel it's got a good vibe to it. I hope it does. This is really at the root of so much that goes wrong for all of us is this self-love component. And it, it's funny. It happens to the Swedish people. You know, it happens. But it also happens to just everyone else. Self-love is really hard because you live with yourself all the time. And it's so easy to be judgmental of who you are. Just coming through and kind of going over it, thinking, resolving it, making it more clearly what it is. There we go. So I'm going to come in here and again, and make this a little more key structural. you're having a part, any part of this is hard for you, I want to gently nudge and remind you to practice that radical self-compassion. You know, if you're new to painting, you know, you're not expected to just know things. You get to go through the experience of learning how. And learning how means that maybe you make mistakes or it's a little challenging, but you don't stress on that, right? We don't expect pharmacists to just know how to be pharmacists, we train pharmacists. We don't expect, you know, somebody who's operating heavy machinery to just operate heavy machinery, they're given training. And this is you, you, this training is so fun. Like this is coloring training. This is an investment in yourself and in your time and in your well-being. And when you invest in yourself, you're better for the people who are in your life. going around it's looking really really good I'm kind of inclined to call this a step because it's so nice to have it there and if I sharp dry everything then I can come back and do some fun shading and it'll work really really well so let's dry everything and come back and let's do the next layer
So now I'm going to take my big scruffy brush, and you see this is a zero D, and all these are is like a filbert shape and a round blender shape. But again, you could use a round anything. You just want a scruffy, stiff brush so you can get dry brush textured. I'm going to take a little of my yellow ochre and my black together, and I'm going to make a nice sort of dark gray yellow, and I'm going to come in the middle. Put my little keychain here. Right in that center. Creating kind of a rough texture. Right there, right there. Just a little bit, the beginning of sheen. This is sort of how we're going to make things look a little bit metallic. I'm dry brushing. That means I don't have a lot of water on my brush. And the paint is coming off in a dry way. And like the palette knife, it's leaving texture. I want to leave dark right there. You know, we're also like picking things so that the way that we're putting down the paint helps give us the shape of the object. Right? If I come in and I add a little bit of that right there. Just right in the middle. Now here I'll have to get into a pointed brush again because there's no, it's not really, this is just, even the zero is too thick for that. But you can certainly rough out the little metal ball right there. Now I'll put this to the side for a second and grab my round brush. And I don't want it to be particularly wet. So I'm going to mix some more together. In other words, I don't want the paint to be wet. back to the gray that I'm using. And like everything else, add a little shading. Now I'm going to add more yellow and now a little bit of white. But maybe a little more yellow. I'll go into my light light. After I get this next layer on. So this isn't quite the lightest one yet. I'm tapping the brush up and down. And it's going to create the sense of this being rusted or rough. I'm leaving the slightly darker metal there to show. That we did with the D brush. And again, you could just do with another brush. I just really want you to know that. Sometimes I'll go back in and just make sure that something looks as rough and rustic as it can. Uh, it's important to do things that are fun for a hobby. I've been trying to figure out what to do for myself since I turned my hobby into my job, as was pointed out to me in every single group session I was in is like, well, you've made your recreation what you do and now wrapped it up in a ball of stress. So I'm like, yeah, I really did do that. But I love it and I don't want to change it. So what do I do? I'm going to have to find a hobby. I'm thinking I'm going to do some fish. I think. I really like actually putting together fish tanks. Something my husband and I have in common. And we both really, really enjoy. Can you just see this key come to life while I'm talking? And we're just tapping up and down. Making rough, rough metal effect. Going around. It's just fun to do. But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And me, but watch me film it and share it with you. 
I think what it is is that it's just fun to share creative things. It's just fun to share what we're working on. I think that's what I love about, I have a Facebook group if you're brand new to the channel. And it's a very curated group. We are um, super supportive. We don't allow any meanness in there at all. And people just love to be in there because it's, you know, it's fun to share what you're doing. It's fun to share your art. Just still with the yellow ochre and the black and titch white. That, that's just looking better and better. That's wonderful. Now I'm going to get into the light, light, light color. You can see me rolling the brush and then loading on the toe. Got some high sheen right there. love putting these little big moments, you know, sort of like, whoa, little effects that create big results. And you can do this when you're a beginner, right? You can do these techniques and get big, big results. Maybe put a little bit of the highlight there and there you go. Oh, it's fantastic. Let's dry it. We're so close to done. You can't even imagine how close to done we are. We're so close to being finished and being able to reward ourselves with a hug and hanging this gorgeous painting on the wall. Let's dry it and come back. I'm going to show you what's next. So now I want to take my D brush again. And I'm going to grab my black back over to my red and start making some darker colors. And I may even grab some black and have water on my brush so it's like a little bit waterier, waterier than I would normally paint. And I'm come inside here. I think it's going to have to be like this. And I'm going to just very carefully make little rough marks. We're going to be shading the inside. I think I'm going to have to do it thicker. The glazing isn't going to work. I'd have to get glazing liquid involved. I'm trying to do this where you guys don't have to buy any specialty products too much. There's rough texture here, but we're going to be really enjoying. As we come around. Yep. Then going forward, we're going to kind of wipe off. And mix a slightly less dark red. Another thing that you could do is if you had another color that was your favorite color besides the red, you could do it like you. The other alternate idea I thought about real hard was turquoise in the center of the key, which would be really, really pretty. But sometimes I like to kind of rely on simplicity. I'm going to come back and add those highlights. But you can see the texture stays visible throughout. Adding darkness. So what we want is it's darkest here. And we're going to keep building up in the center. Now the light's coming in this way. I kind of want to make this 
little heart in the center feel very three-dimensional. I'm just brushing this in. Starting to get some shading going. Starting to have some dimensionality. I just rinsed out. Get a little more red in there. Not pure red. I've got a little bit of color on it. The black. Really, it's just painting smaller and smaller hearts inside of each other and lighter values and then using this kind of rough brushed technique to make it feel dimensional. Just a little something extra we can do to make this, you know, seem special as a painting, right? We want to do special paintings. And continue here and now I'm going to grab some just red a little dust red and then finally I'm gonna take a little red and white we're going to need to dry it well I like it in the wet into wet technique here so what we're doing is technically wet into wet and it's allowing the paint to blend on the surface there we go the little a little something something I'm gonna grab some just white Now it's like a little sort of internally pillowy gem sort of shape. And I really love that. Okay. Guess what? It is time to sign. I know it went fast. I know it seems like we just, we just found each other today. <laughs> and here we are already done with a wonderful painting. But you know, sometimes it's like that. Some paintings take five hours. Some paintings take less than an hour. The amount of time we put in the painting doesn't make the painting better or worse. It's just about our experience during that time with the painting, right? Our big job, really our biggest job, is to learn how to do these paintings with a lot of self-compassion and understanding because you're learning. You don't know what you don't know yet. And the only way to learn it is to try. And not every time you try something is it going to execute perfectly. And guess what? That is okay. You're still an artist. You're still good at this. It's still worthwhile. Everything is actually just fine. Now, I took a little bit of CAD uh, red and titanium white together, and I'm going to use that to sign. I try not to sign my paintings in colors I didn't use anywhere in the painting. Or, you know, like if I signed it with blue right now, that's all you would see is a blue signature. And I don't want to do that. Maybe shouldn't have taken my reading glasses off so soon. <laughs> But I'm pretty familiar with my signature, so I think I can get through. All right. Now, when we come back, I'm going to tell you what's next. I want you to know that painting with you today was really special. And I appreciate your time, and I appreciate your courage. And I do mean that. Painting is a very brave act. We have empty canvases when we begin this. And for most of you, when you pick up that brush, you have no idea how this is going to work out. I've been doing this for a minute. And most of the time, I know how it's going to work out. But recently, I had something happen where 
I now don't always know how it's going to work out. And so I can totally come back to that and appreciate that experience of, of not being totally sure and what it takes to jump in. But the truth is, I do know this. If you keep painting and you keep believing in yourself, you will get to the art that you probably have always had in your heart. And I believe that you're really capable of this. So I want you to be good to yourself, good to each other. And I will see you, you, and then you'll really soon. Bye-bye.